I was really looking forward to the RDNA 4 reveal on Monday and especially the rumored machine learning based FSR 4. I even made it home a bit early to see it, but unfortunately, Radeon pulled a Radeon <laughs> and they didn't show much. Now, I have my own suspicions as to why, but it seems like it was a last minute decision for whatever reason, because they did actually have what is presumably FSR 4 running on a PC at CES. And thankfully, Hardware Unboxed and Digital Foundry were able to show us a little bit about it, and it looks really good actually. They had Ratchet and Clank running on FSR 3.1 on one PC and what is presumably FSR 4 on another. I haven't tested Ratchet and Clank myself many times with FSR and DLSS. I'm well aware of the glaring issues with FSR in that game and in other games actually. Now, be it flicker, artifacting, smearing, ghosting, FSR 4 appears to address all that head on and it looks a lot more like DLSS than it does FSR. Now I captured some footage today at 4K with FSR 3.1 performance and DLSS performance as well so that we can kind of analyze it and compare it to the footage that Digital Foundry was able to capture at CS, which is awesome. Now the dead giveaway for me of how much better FSR 4 is over FSR 3.1 was looking at the confetti because I've looked at it before and with FSR 3.1 when you compare it to DLSS for example there's a lot of it missing but it also looks very over sharpened and artifacty, ghosty, whereas FSR 4, it looks much, much, 100 times better. As a matter of fact, I'd go as far as saying that it looks even better than native. And I'll show you. Now, if you look at DLSS and FSR 3.1 here in the footage I captured today, you can see how much more confetti there is with DLSS and how much cleaner it looks. It almost looks a lot like FSR 4. And this is DLSS performance at 4K, mind you, just like FSR 4 supposedly was in the CS presentation. Now let's look at native 4K with TAA. There's actually less confetti at native 4K with TAA than DLSS performance. And again, if we take a look at the digital foundry footage with FSR 4 at 4K performance, it does look much, much better. Very similar to how DLSS 4 looks. Another thing is the red carpet right at the very beginning. It doesn't look good with FSR 3.1. It looks very, very unstable and it stands out like a sore thumb. Now, if we take a look at that same exact area, you can see with FSR 3.1 on the left, it looks quite unstable and it stands out. And then on the right with DLSS performance, it looks very, very stable quite similar to FSR 4. Now, this isn't an exact comparison, obviously, because the footage of FSR that we have was captured with the camera, but it just kind of gives us a, an overall idea of the improvements, and the improvements are actually quite good. I'm really, really shocked why AMD didn't show anything about FSR 4 while everyone was there waiting for it. One of my theories why AMD probably backed out of showing FSR 4 is that they probably cut wind of what NVIDIA was going to show maybe. Maybe multi-frame generation is something that they're trying to put together a similar feature to showcase with FSR 4. I can totally see them doing that. And hey, guys, that's competition for you. Now, another thing that I found that was a big improvement was artifacting. If you look on the left as the characters clap in their hands, there's a lot of artifacting and noise, almost like it's over blurred, but on the right, it's a lot more stable, a lot more clean. That's a very nice improvement. And again, if we look at some of the footage that I captured today and we compare FSR 3.1 performance with DLSS performance on the right, you can see the similarities there between FSR 4 and DLSS. It's a lot more stable, which is huge. So I guess to, to wrap up my thoughts, FSR 4 looks really, really good. As someone that's been very critical of FSR and its shortcomings because it was definitely behind all the other upscalers out there, this is great. Now the fact that it might be locked to RDNA 4, I personally don't mind. Sometimes progress comes at a cost and we don't know the hardware required to run FSR 4 in a way that makes sense. So I get it, some people might be upset but it is what it is. That's what has to happen for AMD to bring their technology up to par with the competition. And I, I'm actually happy to see that. I feel Radeon missed a good opportunity to showcase RDNA 4 because that's what most people were there to see. 
I was there. I saw the chat. Everybody was, I was flabbergasted. I was like, what is, where's our DNA for? What's going on? So that was really weird. Another thing that I've come to realize is that it seems like a lot of people in the tech space, creators included, don't really seem to be into tech because I thought what was shown, especially from NVIDIA, was actually really cool. And a lot of people seem to be complaining. Um, now, there is valid criticism, so don't get me wrong, but there's also people that are upset about the frame generation stuff. Guys, if you know a thing or two about tech and process nodes, there's not a whole lot more that these guys can do, right? What are they going to do? Make a much bigger chip? There isn't any node advancements the likes of which we used to have previously. And they're going to rely more and more on software features and improving on those features to enhance the gaming experience. And if you don't like using frame generation or multi-frame generation, just don't use it. If that feature doesn't matter to you, consider, think of it as it not existing for you. That's what I do with features that I don't care about. I don't use them. I don't mind that they exist. If there's extra features and options, that's great. But I guess that's my overall thoughts. Leave a comment down below, let me know what you think, and then give the video a like if you actually liked it. And consider subscribing, I'd really appreciate it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.